my topic, uh, I think, as was mentioned, is on early childhood development. Now, uh, there is a extensive research and studies which indicate a very close relationship between the nature of a family and violence against children. And these uh, factors are very well known. Negligence, physical abuse in the guise of discipline, corporal punishment, emotional abuse, we have been talking about it, and even sexual abuse, although the last is more common in adolescence and less in early childhood, I, it is very unfortunate that it also takes place in children under five. Uh, children are the most vulnerable, as we know, in a family in poverty. When there's overcrowding, poor housing, poor parental education, unemployment, and social isolation. Domestic violence, the use of harsh punishment, poor inter-family relationships also exist under these uh, poverty circumstances. However, violence, and that against children, can also exist, I must uh, 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 admit, across ethnicities, varying socioeconomic levels and religions. So it is not only among the very poor, but it can also exist in other situations. Now family factors, particularly when a child is young, is very harmful to children during early childhood. It has been well proven that experiences of violence, neglect and abuse during early childhood causes chronic activation of a child's stress system. These cause, and these are proven, biochemical effects on the brains of infants and preschool children in a manner which is critical to the fragile processes related to brain development of newborns and infants. So the effect on younger children is very much worse than older children. These negative influences of violence manifest more fully unfortunately in later life and can even prevail throughout the lifetime of affected individuals leading to problems of social, emotional and psychological well-being. Memory, learning capacity of adolescents and youth uh, also can occur. Such victimized children even when they become adults and this is proven by studies continue to be affected. Experiences related to abuse and violence in early childhood are also known to be related to greater risk-taking behavior in later life, particularly during adolescence. Other types of impact include depression, alcohol and drug abuse, and even suicidal behavior. The promotion of parenting skills and family support systems can contribute to elimination of violence against children. This includes active fostering of close parent-child interaction and relationships. All those who become parents of all socioeconomic status, whatever socioeconomic status, need to be knowledgeable on the important basics of child development. And I think this is a, a, an important area where the religious leadership could play a role, including other groups. Providing this knowledge should be an obligation, in fact, of state authorities. Actually, it is an obligation of the state. It's already incorporated in the CRC that the state has an obligation to make parents and adults and other caregivers aware of these basics of child development. Providing this, uh, and this can be supported by civil society and religious entities of all faiths who always accord family nurturing due priority. Family nurturing is considered a priority by all religions, so it's an important area. It is also necessary to uh, adopt an integrated approach where early childhood development is concerned. And I would like to just focus on very critical age groups between birth and two years, when the maximum de uh, development is occurring. It's uh, somewhat ironical that the maximum synaptic formation in a person's brain, brain takes place in the early ages, not in the later ages. So though we emphasize uh, on children later in life, by that time the damage is done if you have not done it from birth to two years. Two to five, which is preschool, also is a period of maximum brain development. Therefore, home-based early childhood development is essential even before sending them to preschools, which may or may not occur in very poor families who cannot afford the opportunity. 
Home based can be provided by knowledgeable parents and extended family if they are made aware of it. The basic concepts can be simplified in accordance with the educational profile of the family, including extended family who provide care to children. Many years ago, when I was uh, involved with UNICEF in an early childhood development program, I promoted home-based rather than uh, uh, preschools. Uh, and I think that year, in the, on the cover of the Status of the World's Children report, Sri Lanka's home-based pro program was on the front cover. And I was so proud because it was a community-based program involving parents, extended family. I mean, we should not always think of early childhood in terms of preschools. It may, may not be possible. And it is not actually essential if parents are educated. Uh, Numerous studies on neuroscience over decades have revealed the great importance of preventing violence, neglect in all the phases of a child's lifetime from birth to 18. But it is particularly of great significance in early childhood. Preventing deliberate harm in the earliest to children must be prevented and addressed in the best interest of the child, Article 3 of the Convention. This enables a positive outcome superior to all other interventions in later years. Interventions in later years cannot erase insults, injuries and trauma in the early years. Thus what is recommended is an integrated early childhood development approach. This includes the promotion of early brain development. Decades of extensive research in neuroscience studies and brain research clearly indicate the importance of preventive interventions as being the most effective in the attainment of a positive outcome for children in later adult life. I'm afraid uh, currently in society it's the O level, the A level, university entrance uh, that uh, parents are worried about. And they have completely uh, unaware of where the emphasis should have been, which is early childhood. These interventions on early childhood need to be supported with, of course, good nutrition, access to basic health care, opportunities for play and recreation often forgotten by parents, including social interaction, all of which are essential. It's a package of needs and, uh, that children have to fulfill their potential. Early childhood is sometimes regarded as the period from birth to five years, but it is recommended that it be regarded as the period between birth and eight years. Thus, the transition to schooling at five years is also included, a very critical period for a child. Early childhood is the most critical period in the life of a child, influencing cognitive, social, emotional and physical development in a manner that does not occur at any other period in the life of a person. Early cognitive stimulation including techniques which encourage the development of motor language and thinking skills also contribute to a positive outcome. Uh, and I say, as I said uh, um, earlier, opportunities for play and exploration are most important as these influence synaptic formation and are linked with the development of secure attachments to caregivers while building healthy relationships with other children. Thus, introducing violence prevention is part of early childhood and without doubt will benefit the child. I need to uh, make special mention of certain special groups of children, uh, children. And these are children with disabilities, children in institutions, children of unwed mothers and rape victims who are specially vulnerable to violence and neglect. I think we need to recognize that. Adult protection and early childhood development are important for such groups of children. Better and more responsible parenting, I think that is the key. Responsible parenting is the key to violence prevention. A supportive media in addition to public education, interaction at home level with well-trained and committed personnel, advocacy by religious dignitaries and information supplied through religious institutions, home visits by trained community-based workers, volunteers, all of this could make a change. But there needs to be coordination in communication with the same message and uh, avoidance of conflicting opinions. 
I think our vulnerable high risk families need social support and special situations of course, a migrant mother, we all are aware of these single parent families, domestic violence, poverty, and single parent groups. So I think uh, all in all, uh, my uh, emphasis, my, uh, my belief is that all the data shows concentrate on children as early as possible. We cannot wait till they are adolescents, till they are older, because the damage has been done. So if we can focus on early childhood and then also take, of course, we need to uh, deal with children as they get older. But uh, I think early childhood, good parenting, support for vulnerable families, all of these, uh, I think, will help us uh, in preventing violence and building a healthy and fulfilled generation of children. Thank you.